So, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the mindful practice of visioning and visualization. But again, I, I can talk about this all day. What I really want us to do is actually experience it. But as we, we set aside the time to do that, I think it's cool to think about, again, the power of words. And a vision is often, you know, oh, do you have a vision board? I'm curious. Does everybody have a vision board? I have done one before. But you don't have one right now. I don't have one right now. Yay. Okay. Nobody has one till today. We're re rebooting, reframing, rethinking about what, what, what our reimagined vision for ourselves could be. And I, I want everybody to listen to utilize this in your own unique frame. I know some of you are coming to this with, with a tremendous sense of, of loss and you know, loss of beloveds near us, family and friends and, and partners in life. So, so let's, let's slowly vision what, what could you create as a life with your new experience? Some of you are in retirement, or as I love to call it, rewirement. What are you, you going to vision for your own rewirement? Some of you are, are in um, your, oh, you guys had such a beautiful way of saying it on, on our first class, your, 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 your final career expression. That's not how you said it, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best with it. But, but honoring that, and what's, what's your vision of how that bridge could look? I, I like the idea of the dimmer switches. How do you want to dim down a, a, maybe your traditional career role while you dim up your, your new expression? And that's the, the practice that I want to invite us to today. But it's not just about a vision board. And this is where I think people get, where they either love vision boards or they don't love them or they don't do them. And a vision board is that piece of paper, that thing that you put out there that you hope you might attain one day. The picture of the Mercedes or the trip to Fiji. Uh, the power in this experience isn't just the mindful putting the picture out there, but again, practice the presence in the moment. It's about bringing that picture into your feeling, tone, and nature right now. So vision, vision is just the eyes. Visualization takes that eye part of vision and makes it the feeling nature around it. Vision, the state of being able to see. Visualization, the formation of the mental feeling nature of that experience. And I too was one of those, oh, I don't know about vision boards. They take a lot of time. I don't know if I'll ever, ever actually do it. And I too was going through a major life transition um, about 12 years ago. I, uh, I've mentioned before on, on our class that, that I, 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 I lovingly released my first husband into his highest and best creation because I loved him and I released myself and we moved through a divorce. That first Christmas, that week between Christmas and New Year's, was one of the hardest weeks because suddenly I'm, you know, sitting in my apartment by myself. Oh my God, what have I done? Right. And, um, somebody said, Holly, make a vision board. And I was in that place of let's just slap some pictures on a board and see what happens on that very first vision board. I put, you know, pictures out of that Oprah Winfrey magazine. Oh, here's this beautiful teal dress. But I didn't just cut out the picture. I put it on the board. And I said, I am going to stand on a stage presenting in this teal dress. And I plopped it on the vision board, having no idea that, you know, two weeks later, I would be traveling to Denver, Colorado, to Cherry Creek Mall, one of the high end neighborhoods here in the Denver metro area. And I would walk into Cherry Creek Mall and on the mannequin would be the exact same dress. Wow. And, and I will be I, I will be sure to tell you that I walked in there with my credit card. I purchased the dress and wore it for the presentation that I had. And that that really is is a is a micro example of you know what you what you order from from God, from spirit, from the universe as what you you know you desire in your life the more you open to the possibility of it becoming your reality. And I have many, many, many other stories of that, but it's not just princesses and parking lots and palaces. It can be about that felt sense of what it is that you want to feel as a friend, as an entrepreneur, as a widow, as a uh, 
teacher, as uh, a, a retired person. And all of those words and all of those titles, again, using our Belief 1.0, 2.0 activity, we get to define what the felt nature of those experiences are now and what they're going to be. And I just, I want to score again because I know a lot of this can be be exciting and in that excitement a little traumatic to, to know that none of this is a, is a flip switch on, on or off. I didn't slap the photo on and walk out the door and I had the dress. It was, you know, weeks of feeling myself comfortable in that new experience. So as we do this activity, I want to invite you to, to focus in on your unique situation and your unique dimmer switch, giving yourself the compassion and the grace that these things will show up in the timeline that's right and perfect for you. So you can tell this topic is so 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 important for for all of us to to live and move as we all. I mean, for the first time in the global history, everybody has this opportunity to really create a new vision for for themselves and. Um, as we kind of start to move into uh, to the practice with that, that frame, I want to invite you to grab a piece of paper because we're going to move into kind of a, a mindful journaling activity. Um, but I, I wanted to, to, to share, share this, this quote with you, which is, are you getting my screen now, Carrie? I was, and then I don't see it now. Um... Technology is oh, do I need to share screen? No, no you, I got it. I got it. Hold you should be able to do that. Another button. Oh, share. there it is. Okay. We see now, it now? Are you seeing the quote? Uh, yesterday I was clever. Yes. Okay. So I, I love this quote. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I'm changing myself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of these topics we've, we've touched on are, are clearly about boy, well, I want so-and-so to react this way. I just want him to go get the vaccine. I want him to vote X. I want him to, you know, wear the, you know, wear the red sweater, all that. Well, maybe it, now it's, it's, that's an invitation for us to say, okay, I don't, I, they don't, they're, it's not my job to change them, but it's my job to change my, my response, my reaction to that experience. And a mindful person takes that idea of um, react pauses centers and then finds that place of response so everybody raised their hand that they had not yet done a vision board so this is an opportunity we obviously don't have magazines and stuff to cut out but this quarter four is a great time to start thinking about what is the visualization what are the feelings that you want to have in your life about those five areas your physical health, your financial health, your relationship health. Um, I, I, I shared one of my, my first uh, vision board stories. This is my 2021 vision board. You often probably see me looking up, up over here. I actually have it hanging in my office, someplace that I would see every day. Um, I have a group of girlfriends. We do this um, a big vision board party the week between Christmas and New Year's every year. And we, we sit around and say, what do, what do we want to create? What's that feeling tone? And for us to simplify it, we always start with a, a foundational word. Remember, we talked about intention. How are you going to put your energy in motion? And being really deliberate and intentional about it. So if we say, oh, you know, if we, if we don't take this time, so often we get up and we're like, okay, I'm going to be exhausted today. And exhausted is how you feel all day long versus saying, you know, today I'm going to be excited. So my word for 2021 is love. Um, I put, put the love in the middle. And then we just, I, we always build our vision boards kind of again around those, those five areas, relationship, business, physical health, financial health. And if you kind of start clockwise and you look around my vision board, you'll see those themes that we're, we're getting married. I just said on December 3rd that we didn't know what was going to happen with, with the pandemic and if we were going to be able to have a wedding, which we had to plan and cancel and, and replan. You know, in my business, this idea of, of blogging, I can't wait to have this conversation with you. This is what I'm going to be doing while I lead your your visioning is I just found out LinkedIn is do or they're, they've given me permission to do LinkedIn newsletters. What's the name of my newsletter going to be? Well, you can see I manifested that I had, you know, I'm going to do more blogging, more writing. 
Um, we moving around more, more traveling in, in my world. Life is an adventure. I, I just recently spoke in Aruba and I tell you, I found those two chairs in Aruba. Now, every year it doesn't evolve like this, but I know that I am being deliberate and intentional about what I am creating as what I want to feel into my life versus just being on autopilot and letting life happen. As you, you move around, you know, we talked about physical body. Everybody has a different experience with that. Um, I had my, my COVID experience of, you know, gaining the weight. I, I think I even mentioned a carry, you know, I've lost 15 pounds in the last six weeks doing a detox. I got to get in a white dress. It's, it's not, not, not for everybody. But then again, this idea of sit, you know, putting your sails in motion. What a gift that Carrie called in and offered to be a part of, of my, my sales, sales team. And I know that she and I together are probably working on that, that one in, in the upper corner there, intentional wealth knowing that uh, the wealth that we, we bring in, that we get to circulate to the churches and communities and the charities and the good work that we want to do in the world. So today we won't cut out all the magazine articles, but I want to walk you through the five questions that when you go within, breathe, center, experience, might start to inform the feeling tones of who you want to be as you move through this transition of pandemic to however the timeline goes to living in this new reality. So before we move to the questions, anybody have any thoughts or, or questions as we move into that practice? How big is that on your wall? Just curious. Um, that is a standard poster board. A standard poster board, okay. And um, a few years ago, we decided we would frame them because, again, that which we honor, we, we frame. Mm -hmm. and, and we put on our wall as in a place of, of, of honor and recognition. Now, again, this is, this is in my office. This isn't something that I share with everyone. Okay, I'm a professional speaker. I probably share it with more people than most. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this is the kind of thing that you're probably, you know, the average person isn't, isn't sharing this. But I like, I like to use it. Uh, as a as a teaching tool again that idea you know vulnerability is 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 strength um, you, you see so it's not a living room uh, <laughs> piece of decoration for for me it is it is not um, although the bike down there you see see that I I got a trainer bike for my my birthday and we finally got that set up last night in the basement so you know I'm I'm getting my miles in on my bike now. Nice. Um, but all of these things, I mean, I just, you know, you, you start to put, put it out there. You see under the 2021 loving kindness meditation, it just, just hit me as we were speaking that to date is still the most popular and most uh, requested meditation of all of them that I offer. So do you, uh, and I'm, you may have said this in the beginning, do you continuously add to this or did you give yourself like a time frame that you put it together? Meaning, I know you started either December or January. Actually. Fantastic question, Carrie. You cannot do this wrong. Okay. So find, find the way that works for you. Um, we do it in one night. Everybody comes together. We everybody brings your pile of magazines for the year. We all swap and share, and you know, and have have a great great conversation. You can do this online. There's lots of online apps that allow you to do this. Um, we usually do it in about four four or five hours. And the rule is, you have to have you know, cut them down, cut them and pasted them down. Now all rules are meant to be adapted. I usually have it kind of all laid out, but then I'll add pieces to it kind of over the next few weeks. And every year um, you have the option, whatever you want to do. You can start with a blank slate of paper again and completely rebuild it. You can take things off of your years before boards and, and bring them forward. Because again, there's, there's no time in God. There's no time in spirit. We all know that what's meant for us comes to us at the time that, that, that is right for us. So um, right now I actually kind of started a little file that I just have. And when I see a picture in a magazine or whatever, I sort of put it in that file as this is my order this is, and, and it will all come together in my, my 2022 two board, however, that that is supposed to look. I joke that I actually manifested my husband on, on a vision board uh, about three years ago. I had a picture and it was just a shadow of a, of a male figure 
and I cut it out and smashed it on the board. And, you know, a year later, I, I happened to be in Orlando and, and Eric was standing and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have seen that shadow before. And it, and I stopped and I took a picture of it and I took it home to my girlfriend. I go, you guys, it's this, it's this. And, and, and they're like, oh my oh. God, it's totally, it's totally this. So, I mean, again, creating a sense of community and this practice um, is also a practice that I do do with um, corporations and organizations where all of the HR people and the accounting people and the, the, the sales people and the team and the executive, everybody brings five or six pictures together and then we create the feeling nature of what they want to create in a visual way. And in that case, they may put it in a place where everybody can see it and start to breathe life into it. Love it. So lots of ways to... To start approaching, are you going to create your life by autopilot or create your life intentionally? And um, I believe, Peggy, on one of our first calls, you were talking about, you know, creating life with Dawn. What does that look like? This can be an individual activity or, or a group group activity uh, to sort of think about what, what are those places we want to see or do or the money we want to have, the experiences that we want to create, that you don't have to do this as an individual activity. In fact, it can be be a fun one if i might add to me this is just you could call this strategic planning it might not have you know a five-year uh you know length but it's a it's a one-year strategic plan for what you want to do and then the visualization is the action steps that you have to take to get to each of those places. And of course, in a in an institutional strategic plan, that may mean that you have to do a capital campaign to make something work, or you've got to, if you've decided you're gonna add, if you're a high school and you decide, well, we're gonna add a middle school. I mean, you just have, you have all these steps to make that happen. Do you think that's kind of a, an equivalency? We lose her. Um, yes. My, it, it could be. Are you guys hearing the music now? It worked, Carrie. No, the music is not coming up. Uh, um, it, I saw the volume go down for some reason. I don't know why it went down. Maybe that has something to do with it. Um, that's, uh, Peggy, I love where you're going with that. And you, we're almost trying to cross two bridges at the same time. One being, how do you do this in companies? And then how do you do the actions? Um, it, it, it is the, the to do items, but again, it's the to be items. Who do you have to be as an individual or as an organization to feel gratitude, joy, deserving, worthy of the experience that you are wanting to, to become? I told you guys about this leadership newsletter thing. I have been working on getting that on the doing level for almost a year. But what I know had to happen was I had to become willing to put myself and my content out there on a regular recurring basis in order for that doing thing to show up in my life that I can now do that. Does that help? I guess it's, does it, is it also just, as we've talked about before, getting things out of your head, you know? Like I, I wanna go to, oh, I got the music, got yeah, stop. There we Perfection. go. What'd you say, Laura? No, I was gonna say it gets things out of your out of your head and kind of concretizes them and how you get and how you get there, right? So I wanna go to Iona. I am you know, every once in a while I hear some about somebody going, I'll send me an itinerary and I went it's the northern coast of Scotland. Nice. But that put a picture of Iona up there and then a picture of an airplane next to it and a picture of a friend who might want to go do that with me, all of a sudden that I'm defining that path, how I want to feel, be, become in this trip or whatever. I don't know. Is that a, an example? You're manifesting it, it sounds like. 
I'll go. I'm okay. <laughs> there we go. Get done. All right. We just saw it work right there. <laughs> now we just need the plane. I think Holly's doing her thing here. Are you back? Can I hear you? Can you hear us? Yeah, good old oh, chat. Isn't this fun? <laughs> now I can't hear yeah. You. But I have you ever done a vision board, Laura? No. Yeah, wow. I can see it now. The plane. I, and what made you want to go to Scotland to play golf? Well, that wouldn't all. be a bad thing to do either. Um, I'm echoing somewhere. Me too. It's me. Sorry, oh, okay. guys. That's okay. Um, I heard the music for a minute. I think it's just the home of sort of Celtic Christianity, which is sort of a different um, non-American nationalist <laughs> sort of form. This got, sort of gets back to the kind of the roots, and it's just supposed to be a beautiful place. Do you golf, Peggy? I do not golf, but I can always sit in a golf cart and uh, drink and admire the scene. <laughs> but I would like to go to Iona because as a member of the choir at Idlewild, Yes. We have sung music mm -hmm. that was created by the uh, um, Iona community. So I think that would be really cool. Yeah. Wow. I love it. I did a vision board. I don't know where it is. I'd like to find it again because I did it about a year ago to see if any of it manifested itself. You need to put, I would recommend that you put in your vision board a uh, picture of John Belushi or anyone else from Animal House. Absolutely. That, that, uh, that I'm going to put that on the that top right hand right corner. Right You know, one of my, sadly, I know I'm echoing. I like it. One of my favorite movies is uh, Waterboy. And it's just embarrassing to Logan that it is. But if you haven't watched that, so funny. That's Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. And I know quite a few lines from that movie. <laughs> and um, the other one is Tropic Thunder. Oh, you have to watch Tropic Thunder. That's with Ben Stiller. I'm so glad we're recording this for everybody else who's listening. So, Carrie, can you check out the chat for a second? There's a comment in there. Can you oh, hear me? Yes. I mean, I need to get back on point. At some point, this is from Liz. She would love to share with all of us how she manifested selling her historic home in NOLA post Katrina. And Liz and I have talked about this. It's an amazing, it's amazing story, Liz. Liz. Do, is this a time you can come up and, and share that, Liz? Sounds like, Sounds like she said she's, she's at work she and she can't, can't, but maybe, maybe she'll break. She, oh, she met at some point as in, in the future, not as in on this call. OK. She's saving, she's the, company saving the company during this call, during this call. or making the numbers making work. The numbers work. Well, we love making the numbers work. So let's make our vision work. One of the, the ways I do this, I'm going to just let the, the music go. Can you see the slides again, Carrie? Not yet. I did. I did. I saw them. Then I, they went away. Come back. Because clearly we don't have enough. There it is. There it is. So just as we've done each of the previous classes, I just want to invite you to just take a moment to center into yourself. Feel yourself supported by the chair. And in this practice, we're going to have our paper and our pen. So you'll probably just want to cast your eyes down. 
take a few breaths into that wisdom within you. And having seen a vision board, heard some stories about people creating from their heart's desire, bring your unique experience of where you want to put your focus for your life. And we're going to go through a brief visualization activity to allow that to come forth. So our first question is what is the highest and best vision for blank, retirement, rewirement, new career, self-love in my life now? So just Take a few moments and be with that question. Honor if your brain to-do list shows up, thank it. Just bring yourself back to this moment. What is the highest, best vision for my life now? Just like the vision board, remember you cannot do this activity wrong. Some of you may see a picture or words. Maybe you have a feeling energy. Just easily write it down again with no judgment, knowing this is for you by you. You can choose to share it or you do not have to. Another gentle breath in and out. What is the highest and best vision I'm creating in my life now? So this is an exercise to plant seeds. And I want you to know that you can return to these questions at any time. So now that we're starting to plant the seed, I wanna invite you to deepen, bring that picture from out on a vision board in to your head and slide it gently into your heart. What does my life retirement, new relationship, experience of money in its highest vision, look like, feel like, and sound like. And allow yourself to lean just a little bit more that this experience isn't something out there, but it's something that you know and trust you can have as your life experience now. What does my life as a solopreneur in its highest vision look like, feel like, sound like? What does my life as a widow in its highest vision, look like, feel like, sound like? What does my life in its final career chapter, transitioning, what's that vision look like, feel like, and sound like?
I invite you to lean into your senses. No judgment. Maybe you smell an orange. Hear your favorite song. Feel warm laundry. Just allow yourself to take yourself to that which you are becoming. Gentle breath in and out. If you're feeling distracted, just thank those distractions. Return to the breath. Feel your highest and best. In and out. As this feeling visualization begins to feel into you, your next question is what must I become to be or do or have my new life vision? Let's just breathe into that word become. As a human being, what must I become in my new life vision? Do you need to become kinder or curious? Become joyful? happy, interested, loved or loving. What must I become to live my new life vision? If your mind is falling into doing, thank the doing. Just breathe a little deeper into the being nature. What we know as we begin to feel into our new life, we must release what was for the new higher and greater expression. So what must I release in order to live my new life vision? Just allow yourself to jot down on the page, to open to the possibilities. This is your wisdom for you. What must I release in order to live my new life vision? This might be an item, a thing, a place, a belief. If you graciously let this go, what must you release in order to make space for that new expression, feeling, experience to be realized?
and knowing that nature abhors a vacuum. Nature wants to fill that space you've released with that newness. Your next question is, what must I embrace in order to live the new vision? What must I allow in my experience? And as we move into our final question, these questions build a framework for you to breathe in and connect to yourself. So we always like to, to close with our final question. Is there anything else your soul, your heart wants you to know at this time? And as I repeat that question, I just invite you to take five mindful breaths at your own pace, gently allowing your heart to emerge. Is there anything else to be known by you, for you at this time? Is there anything else whispering to you at this time. Now having brought forth something that you want to create in your life and having navigated through these visualization questions, just invite you to know that this newfound sense of creativity and wonder is something that you can bring back with you. So I just invite you to come back into your space, maybe gently review your notes and know that you can utilize this as the basis for magazine clippings or a vision board, or just simply utilize these notes to inform the days, the weeks, and the months ahead as you begin to live your new mindful life. Welcome back everyone. How was that experience for you? It was really good, but I'm thinking that you could have multiple vision boards because you can think of something that's really actionable, something that you might want to get involved with, you know, a, a, a belief that you have in something where you can get involved with whatever that is. But you can also have a vision board for uh, more emotional, touchy-feely goals. I, I absolutely agree, Peggy. I, I like to sometimes think about my vision boards as a prayer. I obviously have multiple prayers, so I, I you know, I dif different different prayers in in every time I pray and I have different vision boards. So while there's core themes, I think we want to continue to tend the soil on and or or, or pray for or, or vision and, and have in our life. Um, I, I, I lay mine out in, in multiple ways and, and with all those different quadrants because they do they do evolve and change. And some years I, I like look at the board and I go, yeah, I got none of this. <laughs> and, and some, some I, I, do, I get more. Carrie, you had a, uh, a comment in the, the chat I wasn't able to take in while I was moving through the experience, but you ask about a slide. Which one um, can, I, can I answer for you? Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. 
um, oh, it was it just, was the, just actual, the actual, the visual of the, the I guess it was, was a man like, yeah, standing there and a little, little, little child, child in front of, front of the, uh, the uh, yeah, I just, shoes. Shoes. Um, so the question with that one is what must I embrace in order to live my new life vision? And in order to create a new life vision, we have to embrace baby steps. We have to embrace moving forward. And so for me, the subtle messaging in that is, is embracing that childlike wonder. Now, again, everybody uh, gets to, to define both the question and the imagery uh, for, for them. But yeah, that, that's why, why I have, have that one for that one. I love it. Thank, oh, thank you. you. That, that, that explains a lot. Because <laughs> that, that's, that's important to remember. So as with all of our classes, we, uh, you know, you are certainly welcome to, to, to share, Hey, I had this experience or that experience. This was, this was challenging. This was good. This was hard. Um, or you can certainly hold that as, you know, sacred for yourself as a seeds of wisdom for you. But I love to do that activity because I think there, there's a wisdom in those questions. And again, Carrie and I will make sure that you get those slides, um, just so that you have those, those questions, because a mindful person, I believe so often, is the most powerful person in the room, not because they have the answer, but because indeed they have a heart and soul filled question and they allow that collective guidance in the room to pull either the individual or that organization forward. And I'm so grateful that you guys can both see how this tool can work in both ways. I love, I love that, that quote. quote. The mindful, the mindful person is the most powerful, powerful person in the room because they have, they brought their heart and their soul and their mind to the room, to the, to the existence, I guess. Since we're on Zoom. <laughs> Did you make that up to me, Molly? I'm just talking. <laughs> I, I, I was actually going to tell you guys, I, I, I know every class I do, I start 30 minutes before the class and I do my own mindful practice. What, how can I be most of service today? And, and as we were preparing for, for today's class, I, I, I really felt like this activity was the right one to honor uh, the, the, the traumatic experiences that we've been through, the joy-filled experiences, and invite each and every one of you to explore what you want to to feel going forward. So thank you, uh, Carrie, for recording this. And certainly if you were able to join us live, this is a session that you can can play back. Or um, if you weren't with us, I hope that you'll, you'll grab a piece of paper and maybe a cup of tea or, or coffee and, and start to allow these questions to ignite your soul and your life into 2022. So great. And I love, and I love the way the you way get you together, together with a group of friends, friends and do this every year. I actually, carry do those six questions for every project I undertake. So when we started this class, I pull out those questions and I say, what, so I, where that blank line is, you know, what's the highest and best vision for a course with Carrie? And then I, then I let that inform what's, what's the highest and best for our wedding. I, and I let that, that inform the experience. And we do this for vacations. What's the highest and best for our vacation? What do we have to embrace? What do we have to release? What do we have to, to, to co-create so that we, we have that intersection of the collaboration from the head. Obviously we got to get airline tickets and we've got to do all that, but how do we want to be in the process of, of creating, creating a, an, an experience. So oh, cool. this is a tool that you can use in a macro way or in a micro way. So Eric, Eric do a board and you would do a board, board maybe before maybe vacation or whatever, whatever, a wedding. wedding. Well, not all of them are full vision boards, but it might be just the journaling and the doodling and the, yeah. and the, and the, the, the questioning that, that allow us to, to create that. Uh, which we, we want to, to have in our business or you know, we're going to the international meetings and exhibit trade show like 5,000 people 160 continent crazy we're running a mindfulness center so we start what's the highest and best vision of that how can we be of service right. and we just jot all jot all those notes down and then allow that feeling of what we want to feel and see and touch and taste that, that we're going to create in this experience inform that the reality and as you can see we did this today i think it was about 15 minutes this this activity i can do in 15 minutes or i can do it 
in a day and a half, mm -hmm. depending on, on the, the depth and the, the scale of, of the project and, and of, of the time. Um, Perfect. What a, what gift. a gift. Thank you Thank for you doing for this with us. My pleasure. My pleasure. So um, next week we're going to do um, intention setting and trust building. Now we're all walking that, that walk of faith, that walk of trust. How do we lean into, deepen our understanding, our connection, and our use of intention and trust as mindful leaders leading our families and leading our companies? I love it. I love it. I wanted to mention to every, I'm getting a little echo, so I don't know if you all are hearing it too, um, but uh, maybe that's better. Can you hear me okay? The, um, I'm doing the chaos to calm with Holly and the, I've done this all week. We've, she did it five days in a row at eight o'clock in the morning, which sometimes I was on screen and sometimes I wasn't because you know, you don't want to see me necessarily that early. And um, it was so helpful and just kind of getting it, this whole idea of mindfulness in my system and daily life. And Holly's going to offer that again in December. And Holly, I don't know if you want to mention it. Um, you put the link in the, in the chat room. Thanks. But um, that was amazing to have gone through it this week. And um, there's just there are many classes. There are you know, 25 to 30 minutes. We do a little training what mindfulness is. Um, then we do a practice and send send people out in into their day. And each day we advance it. So it's personal practices for the first two days. Then it's mindful sales, mindful leadership, and mindful executive presence. And while the the frame is the same every month, we do it the first week of every month. So it'll be December 6th through 10th. It's uh, it's different every single month based on, on the dynamics of whatever the current research or trends are and, of course, the, the people in the room. But uh, it's always a great joy, and we'll do that uh, in, in December. And if you That's guys wonderful. would like to join, there's the link. Yeah, it's really good it's for really people, good. people in the workforce, I think, too, you know, that are trying to figure out just a good way to start the day. Yeah, it's fun. We've had association people, government people, corporate people, all age, all diversity. We've this uh, de December will be a year. We will have done done a whole year of them. Thank you. What else? Anybody else have anything they want to add? I know Liz again can't really uh, come into the conversation because she's on mute. But thanks for being here, Liz. Holly, I'm kind of interested in you're doing the vision board business-wise, and in particular, like you and your husband. Do you do separate ones and then see if they match? Can you hear me? I'm trying to stop that echo. Yeah, um, you stopped it, great. No, we don't do separate ones. What we would do, so the we'll come up with a word that grounds the business for the year. Um, I'm just sort of making this up, but if I, if we're doing 2022, you know, he'll throw three or four words out, I'll throw three or four words out. We'll sort of feel into what the words look like. I'm going to guess that 2022 will be monetized. So monetize becomes sort of the, the, the theme for, for the year. And then we look at, again, each of those, those aspects. So what does, our highest and best in monetizing the business look like in um, physical form. And then we will do a meditation. We'll, we'll sit with that question and whatever wisdom comes through him and comes through me, um, he might, well, let's just make it up. Um, suddenly he sees cubicles. Okay. What does cubicles mean? Okay. It means we're going to have an actual off. We're going to take that, the, the business out of the home, home office. So we just sort of stay with the quote. What does that, what does that look like? Okay. Do we, um, and sort of that collective synergy that comes from us, then we might look at, uh, at financials. Okay. What does, what does financials look like for us? And, you know, we'll breathe into it. We'll vision. And then he might say, money looks like a bank. Okay, what's a bank look like? Okay, we, we want to work with banks this year. 
or he we may vision and he'll say you know Holly this year it looks like um, a mastermind five, I see five people in a boardroom a couple days you know and, and everybody you know I'm using seeing words I tend to be a visual person but for him it might be a f feeling word or I, you know I, I taste coffee and we're gonna work with coffee company so it you you work with that kind of what we're going to talk about next week that that deep intuition and that trust and and creating that the vulnerable place to explore what each of those areas um might look like we actually wrote our first book together in in 2019 and that was really you know he had a vision we we have knowledge we want we want to have this book and we didn't write it together. He wrote his part and I wrote my part, but we had a frame. Okay, we knew each chapter was going to be part him and, and part me, and then we worked with an editor, and the um, the cover was, you know, what do you, you know, we went to a bookstore, we sat in the shelf in the business section, what, what do the most popular books look like? Okay, and then the, the colors and the, the shape sort of come, come from that. So, um, um, you I have to play the five questions in my brain, you know, relationships. What do those relationships look like? I, Carrie was so generous in her, her sharing this morning about that community that we gathered. Um, for good and for interesting, I have always had a vision that my my company serves at this this level that we're, we're in here, you know, men and women who who are who are conscious leaders and, and looking looking to to advance their their life or or their career and sometimes this stuff can can slip into trying to serve somebody that maybe we're not supposed to serve and so we might frame that up a little bit uh, one year Eric really wanted to go international he was abs and he had this vision of going international and um, okay what's that like well we spoke in South Africa that particular year but um, it, it's that space of being willing to say, what do I desire? What do I want? What do I, what do I deserve? What do I want to create? And then breaking it down. So you could do it by human resources, but, you know, relationships. You could do it by financials. Here's what that looks like. Here's what our marketing looks like. And take all of the, the business frames of your, your business and do it by each of those buckets as well. But um, so often, we need to let go of those silos. Back to that, what do, what do you need to release? Okay, as a business, we need to release the silos and open up to becoming one one team. So maybe for one company, I, I did this for, I, 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 I did the, do this a lot in um, volunteer groups. Not that you can't do it in corporate, I've done it in corporate too, but um, I will never forget this organization. We're doing the visioning. What is it? What does it look like? What's your business feel like? What does it sound like? And this gentleman, he wrote, he, like, he had this vision. He could feel it, warm laundry. When I go into ABC organization, I want it to feel like warm laundry. And that was what we started with. I had the marketing people, the communications people, the finance people all in the same room. And they started un, you know, picking apart what warm laundry felt like. And mm. we, we visioned all that. And then we said, what are those things tied to in business? Well, we want it to be comfortable. We want it to be welcoming. We want it to be approachable. We want, you know, and then we started to look, okay, what does approachable look like in, in our organization? Well, we want a welcome center. Okay, what's a welcome center that feels like warm laundry look like? And then they, they ended up creating that particular year, the big initiative they had was to make their business feel like warm laundry. And they made, they created a welcome center that had all the various tools and resources that allowed people to feel like home when they attended that, that organization. And they saw tremendous new membership recruitment. And then of course the retention rates went up as a result of that. So uh, sometimes it, it, it's about getting out of the, we've always done it that way. If that organization had gone into strategic planning with, we've always done it that way, they wouldn't, they would have just, you know, we're gonna do our membership events and they're gonna look like this and people are gonna email us if they need membership services. But, but we, we, we brought in the head stuff and the heart stuff and created this whole new experience for them. Does that help, Peggy? That was a very long answer to a very short question. I, uh. I thought it was really enlightening. And I did want to mention again that, you know, coming together, Holly, and your willingness to um, be with us for five, 
sessions or five weeks. Um, we're very grateful. And I know showing this recording to everyone who uh, had to miss the class today, I think will give us kind of that renewed sense of let's come back together and talk about what we did and um, how we react to the vision board concept. And I think, you know, to be reminded that it's so helpful to do them, but it, I've never had the approach. I've never been with somebody who taught it or who's teaching it this way. So thank you. I think it's gonna really open up some great intention setting and trust building for us on the next class. Sounds great. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next you. week. Laura, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, just thank you. This oh, is awesome. Thank you. So good to see you. I got to go buy some magazines. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> go oh, to I guess we do have an internet and we could print out pictures. Oh, so the. Uh... Now that is a vision right there. <laughs> <laughs> so good oh, to thanks. see you. Thanks, thanks Ali. Thank Have you. a good weekend, everybody. You too. Right, Talk you to too. You. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Liz. Thanks, Deb. Thank you, Holly.